L1 is a limiter, level maximizer, and high-quality digital requantizing plugin that can be used in a variety of tracking and mastering applications. The requantization is achieved using an instance of Michael Gerzon's IDR, or Increased Digital Resolution, noise-shaped redithering process. Though the technical level of algorithm control is deep, the graphic user interface is elegantly simple. First, a bit about IDR. This redithering process offers two dither types and three noise shaping curves for processing a wide variety of audio applications. This requantization is for all bit depths, including 24, 20, 16, 12, and 8 bit outputs. IDR prevents the loss of critical low level detail in an audio signal once it has been digitally processed, even with a plug in. L1 as a limiter is very powerful due to its ability to look ahead at the audio signal and adjust the attack time accordingly to offer a very fast response that is free from any overshoot. It's truly a brick wall limiter that should in most cases be used last in the signal chain, whether used on an individual track or across the mix bus during mix down or mastering. The usual function for L1 is to limit the transient peaks without audible artifacts normally caused by conventional compressors and limiters. You can use up to 6 dB of reduction before hearing the artifacts of the limiter. You can then use the output ceiling fader to set the ceiling for the brick wall limiting imparted by L1. Note, most host applications support two instances of L1, and they are the L1 limiter, mono or stereo, which is a wideband limiter without IDR, and plus L1 ultra maximizer, which is the full plug-in with limiter and all IDR options. We will be showing the Plus L1 Ultra Maximizer instance. Let's check out the controls. On the left are the input level controls. Our example involves a stereo mix. The two faders are independent in case you have a mix that has a balance problem. To link the two, simply click and drag over both fader knobs, or simply click between the faders and they will respond equally. You can even drag up or down between the faders to adjust the stereo input level. To unlink, simply click on the outside of either fader knob. Next is the threshold level control, which sets the level at which the limiter is engaged. Simply click and drag one of the handles or drag up or down between the two triangle handles to adjust the threshold. You can also adjust it by clicking in the field above the faders and entering the value with the keyboard, cursor arrows, or click and drag up or down with the mouse. Make sure to watch your level indicators while relying mainly upon your ears to adjust this parameter. If you click on the level indicators, the peak indicators located below them will be reset. Notice, with a fixed output ceiling, the threshold, when lowered, actually increases the level of the audio signal. Next is the control for the output ceiling. Here we can set the maximum output for our audio signal as high as digital zero. I like to back this off a half dB or so when mastering CDs for that just in case factor. And this is explained in your comprehensive Waves user guides that accompany your plugins. There are also level indicators with handy peak indicators below them as well. Like the threshold control, the out ceiling has a field above the faders where we can use the keyboard, arrows, or mouse to adjust it. Next is the attenuation level indicator with gain reduction indicator above it. Simply click on the level indicator to reset the gain reduction value. You will find yourself clicking this indicator often. Next is the release control. It controls the amount of time it takes for the limiter to let go of the signal. Next are the controls for IDR. Bit depth is first, and as previously mentioned, there are settings for 24, 20, 16, 12, and 8-bit outputs. This covers most available delivery formats to which we might deliver our mixes. Next is the IDR type. The settings are Type 1, Type 2, and None. Type 1 is designed for no nonlinear distortion or modulation at low levels. It combines optimal dither noise with psychoacoustic noise shaping. It is commonly used for CD mastering and should be only used once as, if it is applied multiple times in succession, it may produce unwanted audio artifacts. Type 2 also uses dither with a similar noise shaping curve. It adds less noise to the signal, but only at the expense of some low-level distortion. 
Great for audio that might be converted to 8-bit 44.1 kHz for multimedia work or transmitting over the internet. Next are the noise shaping controls to reduce the audibility of the added dither noise. Moderate, Normal, and Ultra are the settings. Moderate is mainly used for 8 or 12-bit files, but it can also be used to affect 16-bit files as well. Normal is the standard recommendation for most users and all bit depths. Ultra is a high quality setting that should only be used in the last stage of digital processing. Later editing or processing may experience some side effects such as digital clicks and pops. That is not to say that it's not possible to use this setting. Lastly, the domain control can be toggled between digital and analog. This addresses some of the limits posed by end-user playback devices with cheap or poor digital audio converters. Sometimes the increased levels made possible by L1 aren't accepted so well by these devices, and some of them even clip the signal during playback. The digital domain setting is for the absolute end of the line, and no extra conversion or processing will occur after this stage. Change the setting to analog to protect against this problem of bad digital audio converters in case your CD will be played on a variety of playback systems. Let's adjust L1 as a mastering limiter assigned to the stereo mix bus. Remember, option clicking any of the controls returns it to the default setting. As you can see, the effective use of L1 can be a powerful tool in controlling the dynamics of your audio files. For additional detailed definitions and operational tips on L1, make sure to check out the Waves User Guide. For related information, check out the L2 plugin tutorials included on the CD-ROM.